what's happening YouTube today I am just driving around and checking some of my spots that I typically start targeting fall crappie for um, or in I should say and this spot here I didn't have any intentions of stopping at and all the other places I was going to go to on the way here somebody's already at but this is a spot that I don't think gets fished very often however somebody knows about it because there's fish attractors buckets of pipes sticking out of them anyway I've already been here fishing for about 20 minutes I caught three crappie I'm not keeping anything today so anyway let's get down to the water so we can catch some more alright what we're going to be using today because I don't have an actual crappie rod with me is my Dobbin 661 light action it's just really my go-to rod I use it for bass you know small catfish crappie bluegill you name it I've got it paired up with a Shimano Vnoski 1000 and 8 pound braid. I absolutely love this reel. I think this is the best $100 or less reel on the market or a reel at that price point. Anyway, we're down to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader because I left my 8 pound and 6 pound at home and a Arky chartreuse sickle jig head, uh, 1 16th ounce, and a trout magnet in the whatever the shad pattern is and I've took and cut one of the legs off and it just gives them a lot more action that way I honestly Leland lures trout magnet crappie magnet if y'all see this which you probably won't y'all might want to try making the standard trout magnets with one leg trust me it's worth it now I'm not the uh, I'm sure I'm not the original creator of that idea but i get more bites off of the single leg crappy magnets and trout magnets than i do the double leg oh shoot there's a crappie right there and the way i'm working this is just a slow steady retrieve and just giving it real real light twitches to get the get that one little tail to flapping and getting their attention a little bit better oh right there <laughs> missed it dang it because like i said i've already been here for about 20 minutes and caught three that were pretty undersized which i'm not keeping anything anyway i've already mentioned that i'm just seeing where the crappie are at right now that way i'll know or have a good idea of where to look later on this fall oh small slab but we will take it you know all crappies are slabs to me pretty white crappie this is my fourth white crappie of the day and like i was saying in my one of my recent shorts the way you can tell a white crappie from a black crappie is white crappie um have vertical bars and like four to six spines on our dorsal fin where black crappie are more blotchy and colored and have more spines on their dorsal fin got it Oh, don't get in that. Don't get in that. This is a slab of a crappie. I'm talking a straight up donkey. Dude. That is a freaking hammer. I don't have my scale or measuring tape with me, which that is obviously over. That is obviously over 10 inches and easily a pound or more. However, I do have my bass scale up here with me. So we're gonna weigh it real quick and get it back. .1 
0.7 pounds. All right, everybody, one last look. Well over 10 inch crappie. It's a black crappie and came to 0.7 pounds. Let's get it back. All right, y'all. Let's fix my jig head here and see if we can do that again. Oh, there's a hit. There's another one. This one's a lot smaller. Itty bitty little crappie. You still a slab. All crappie are slabs to me. It's a little black crappie. And let's get her back. Got it. This one's a little bit nicer than the last couple small ones. It's because it's a good sized yellow bass. Yellow bass are fun, especially when they get a little bit bigger like that. Whoops. I just have to remember. Plus one fish being a yellow bass, he flopped off. All right, last cast, which was actually like 10, 15 minutes ago, but you know how last casts go. Ooh, there was a bite. Well, I got I got bit there, so rule of the last cast: if you get bit, catch one or lose a fish on the last cast. You're warranted one more last cast. All right, we're in the last spot of the afternoon, and we've got plenty of shade. Oh, wow. That one, whatever it was here, right off the bat. But really the hardest part about fishing bridges for crappie is just, it's not catching them really. I mean, it is catching them. It's finding the depths that they're at and consistently staying at that depth. Like it's not real deep right here under this bridge. Like right now, maybe six seven feet like during the winter when this gets down to winter pool you can just about walk to that island down there without getting your feet wet but yeah finding the depths that the crappie are at is first thing to try to do situations like this where the wind is real high and it's causing you to not feel the bites is a prime example of why high vis line comes into play like that right there I saw the bite before I felt it you know, the high vis line you can see it twitch as the fish, the fish hits it that way you know it gets you a bite Right there, for example, you got a big bow in your line, 
and with the high vis line you can see that line just twitch just a little bit if you don't feel it you'll at least be able to see the bite and get your fish hopefully got it whatever it is there's a little crap eye ounce head on with all this wind I may have to go to a 3 16 or a quarter just to be able to control my line better and there's another one Down there again. Another fun little crappie. Get a picture and get it back. You know the routine. That's large. It's also not a crappie. Come on now. That's a little large mouth. Something to tip a chunk out of him. Yeah, it's about three quarters of a pound. I know why they're up in here so thick, or well, at least in the last spot, and possibly this one too. Getting used to knowing what your fall rates are for your jig heads is a big role too. Um, warmer water like this, I don't know what the water temperature is, but it's it's fairly warm. You know, 64th ounce and 32nd ounce jig heads typically fall at about well, 64th ounce falls at about a foot every three quarters of a second to a second and then 30 second ounce about a foot a second 16th ounce about a foot and a half to two feet a second so you can kind of gauge your depth by counting counting down That was definitely a bigger crappie. The big ones, at least around here, you don't really even feel them bite. It's just a slow nudge backwards, basically. Just a slow pull. Got it.
you an itty bitty one, but he's, he's kind of chunky. Well, yeah, you got some shoulders on you for such your size. But I've basically gone to just doing a straight retrieve instead of trying to twitch it like I was earlier. It's helping a little bit with this wind. Got it. Except that is not a crappie. That is primo catfish bait and if I had my cooler with me and some ice you'd be going in a cooler but I don't have it so I'm gonna have to painfully toss that skipjack back you bite. Well, I forgot to record an outro because I had to boost somebody off, but it's all right. Anyway, we ended up catching 13, 14, something like that crappie. Three or four of them wasn't on camera because I was already in the area, you know, just pre-fishing it, seeing what was, you know, in there, just testing the waters. Um, also caught a skipjack yellow bass and a large mouse, and I am thoroughly pleased to see crappie are finally moving into these coves. You know, it's that time of the year they're starting to move up shallow, corralling bait fish, you know, feeding up for the winter. So, once the water start cooling down, we get farther into the fall months and into the winter months, a lot of my content's going to be changing over to crappie and wintertime bass fishing, you know, stuff like that. So, expect it. Anyway, hope y'all enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it, and we will see you in the next video.